Hi there. In this video, we'll look at how to use in-text citations and quotations according to the 7th edition of the APA Manual. A few things before we get started. Citing your work properly helps ensure that you don't commit plagiarism, which is important. If you're looking for information on how to create a references page for the end of your paper, there will be another video for that, which should be linked to in the description below. You'll also notice in the description that there are timestamps that will jump you to specific parts of the video. So if you're looking for one thing in particular, use the timestamps to take you there. For this video, I'm using Microsoft Word on a Mac computer. If you're using a different computer, a different word processing program like Google Docs, or a different version of Word, your citations should still look the same. You might get the most help from this video if you pause and go back through steps as needed. A final few notes. I'm using something called lorem ipsum text, which is a type of placeholder text for illustrative purposes. You'll notice though that all of the in-text citations are highlighted to make them easier to see. You might also notice that I've got the formatting symbols displayed on my document. I find them helpful for seeing behind the scenes when I'm setting up my papers. You can easily turn them on or off by clicking on the show, hide, formatting marks button which is the button with the paragraph symbol on it. Plagiarism. When you write papers for your classes, you usually use information that comes from other works like journal articles, books, specific chapters, websites, reports, podcasts, TED Talks, and so on. This is perfectly fine and expected, and it's usually a requirement for academic papers. On a fundamental level, academic writing and research works by building off of what other students, researchers, and authors have already done. However, when you use this information that comes from other sources, you need to be clear and identify which information is coming from you and which ideas and information comes from other people. We do this through using direct quotations and paraphrasing others' ideas, and by using in-text citations. Plagiarism is basically when you use information from another source, but you don't give proper credit to the original source. If you use another person's words, ideas, content, arguments, methods, etc., without letting your readers know that the information comes from another source, then you're passing it off as your own original work. As a student, plagiarism often results in a failing grade for that assignment, or even the course. It can even jeopardize your status in your academic program. Even if you didn't intend to plagiarize, you can still be punished for it if you don't cite your sources correctly. So using in-text citations consistently and accurately is important for writing high-quality papers. In-text citations, the basics. Now, before we dive into creating in-text citations, note that APA style uses an author date citation system. This helps people identify a source based on the author or authors and the date the work was published. These two elements, author or authors and the date, are what we usually use in in-text citations to give credit to other sources. You don't need to list the article title or the journal title or any other credentials or affiliations the author or authors have, just the author's last name and the year of publication. How you create an in-text citation depends on two things. Number one, the number of authors that a work has. And number two, whether you are making the citation as an aside from the sentence, which is called a parenthetical citation, or as part of the sentence itself. We call this a narrative citation. Parenthetical citations are more common and typically go at the end of a sentence, though you can sometimes put them within a sentence if that makes the most sense for your specific paragraph. To create a parenthetical citation, you put the author or author's last name and year of publication separated by a comma in parentheses, and you put that at the end of the sentence. The period, or whichever punctuation mark you use, that ends the sentence should go after the closing parenthesis. So in our first example, with one author, at the end of the paraphrased information, you have a starting parenthesis. The author's last name, you don't need to include first names or middle initials, then we have a comma, then we have the year of publication, and we finish with the closing parenthesis and a period. For sources with two authors, the process is exactly the same, except you also include the second author's last name with an ampersand. That's the and sign before it. So again, 
Look at the second example here. When a work has two authors like this, make sure to always cite both authors. Now, if a source has three or more authors, the process is just a little bit different. Write the first author's last name, but follow that with the words et al and a period. Follow that with a comma, followed by the year of publication. Notice that in et al, there isn't any punctuation after the et, but there is a period after all. Not only that, but in these parenthetical citations, there should be a comma after the period, which comes right before the year of publication. So it doesn't matter if you have three authors or 23 authors, you always use the first author and then et al. By the way, et al is another way of saying and others. All right, we've looked at the three major types of parenthetical citations. Those are the ones that come at the end of your sentence and are inside a set of parentheses. But you can also cite sources as part of a sentence, which we usually see when you're directly referring to a particular source. This is when you use a narrative citation. The process is basically the same, except that only the year of publication goes inside the parentheses. As you can see in this example, you can write something like, according to Rios, 2020, to start a sentence. When there are two authors and you're using narrative citations, the only difference is that instead of using an ampersand, that's the symbol, you need to actually spell out the word and, A-N-D. For three or more authors, you still use at all with a period after all. In-text citations, organizations, multiple sources, duplicate citations. Now, there are a few exceptions and special situations that you need to be aware of. The first is if the author is actually an organization. In these situations, you simply write out the name of the organization, followed by a comma, then the year of publication. So treat it the same way as you would a one author citation. Now, if the organization can be abbreviated, like in this example, make sure to write the abbreviation in brackets at the end of the first citation. Then, if you cite that source or organization again later in your paper, you just need to use the abbreviation instead of writing out the full organization name. Another consideration is if you are citing more than one study at a time. For example, let's say you want to cite three studies that support a theme that you've identified. The author date format is the same as before, but for parenthetical citations, you enclose multiple studies within the same set of parentheses. So here you can see that each citation is separated by a semicolon, and you should order the citations the same way you would in your references page which is alphabetically by the first author's last name. If you wanted to do this as a narrative citation, the author date format is the same as before, and you essentially treat each reference as its own item in a list, meaning that you would separate them out with commas and write out and, A-N-D, before the last one. The last couple of points here have to do with different sources having the same in-text citation, which has the potential of being pretty confusing. So let's say you have two studies with three or more authors published in the same year, and the first author is the same for both. If you were to shorten them using et al, they would look the same. To avoid this though, you should list out as many authors as needed to differentiate the two sources. So for these citations, we just need to go to the second author to differentiate them. But if you needed to go to the third author, or the fourth, or the fifth, that's okay. Another potential issue is if you have two different works with the same exact authors and years. In this case, there's no way to differentiate them because they will have the same information. In these situations, just add a lowercase letter. We'll start with lowercase a, and then a b, and then a c, directly after the year. You'll need to keep track of which reference has the A and which has the B, otherwise you'll create more confusion. So that's how you do in-text citations. The process is fairly straightforward, especially when you remember that it always comes down to two elements, authors and the year of publication. In the next section, we'll look at how to paraphrase or summarize information you're using, as well as how to use direct quotations if necessary. Paraphrases and Quotations when discussing other works, you're usually going to paraphrase or summarize relevant information, meaning that you are going to put the information in your own words. So rather than describing another finding or idea using the original author's exact words, you'll phrase it in a different way. In academic writing, 
This is the preferred method of using and citing other works because it allows you to highlight key pieces of information, to connect that information with other sources that you have identified, and to make a coherent argument to support the specific topic or theme that you're trying to make. Remember, whenever possible, you should paraphrase what you're citing. Both parenthetical and narrative in-text citations should be placed near the paraphrased information. To think about it another way, as you are reading and writing your paper, it should be very clear which ideas and words are yours and which ideas and words come from another source. If you have a long paraphrase, one that goes on for several sentences, you should cite the source in the first sentence to make it clear to your readers that this information comes from somewhere else. As you continue your paraphrase, you don't need to provide another in-text citation, provided that it's clear from your writing that you are referring to the same source. This means that you don't need to provide a citation at the end of every single sentence if you're continuing to write about the same source. When students do this, it's repetitive, excessive, distracting, and unnecessary. Now, the other way of using others' information is with a direct quotation. There really are only a handful of situations when you should use direct quotes, like if you're using a definition or if you're writing a response to what someone wrote. Additionally, use a direct quote if, and maybe only if, those specific words in that specific order are the only way to convey the message behind those words. Otherwise, you should paraphrase the information into your own words. The types of situations that necessitate quotes are rare. Most published research studies do not use quotes at all. Additionally, if quotations are a significant chunk of your paper, that means you are not putting information into your own words, which takes you close to plagiarism. But if you do need to use quotes for a paper, the process is not very complex. For short quotations that are fewer than 40 words, put the quoted text inside of a set of quotation marks. Add a parenthetical citation after the closing quotation mark and include the page number after the year of publication. Basically, you're taking a standard in-text citation, putting a comma after the year, and then writing the letter P, period, and then the page number the quote came from. You should also try to incorporate the quote into the structure and flow of your sentence. You may also use narrative citations with a direct quote. Notice the examples here. As usual, the year of publication goes within a set of parentheses following the author's names, and only the page number goes in parentheses at the end of the quotation, but before the period. See that? For longer quotes of 40 words or more, you will need to use something called a block quote. Here, the quoted text starts on its own line, with all the text in the quote indented a half an inch. Then, add a parenthetical citation after the end of the quote. In this situation, the parenthetical citation comes after the closing period of the final sentence because the citation itself is not part of the quote. You don't need to put a block quote in quotation marks, but you should keep it double-spaced. You can also see in this example what happens if a quote spans multiple pages. Use PP period and put a hyphen between the page numbers that the quote starts and ends on. And finally, if your block quote goes on to a second paragraph, you'll need to indent that second paragraph and subsequent paragraphs from the already indented half-inch spot. So those are the two ways to quote information. If you want to avoid having to manually count how many words are in a quote, just highlight the quote text and check the word count at the bottom of the screen. In Google Docs, you would highlight the text and go to Tools and Word Count. Again though, you should avoid using quotations as much as possible. You want to primarily paraphrase and put information into your own words. Some closing thoughts. In this video, we took a quick look at what plagiarism is and how you can avoid it. We also looked at how to cite sources using both parenthetical and narrative in-text citations following the author date citation system that APA style calls for. We went over how to cite organizations as authors, multiple sources at the same time, and what to do to avoid duplicate citations. We also looked at how and when to cite information using paraphrases versus how to use and properly cite direct quotes. There are a number of other specific types of citations and special scenarios that we didn't cover in this video, but the APA publication manual, the seventh edition, covers them all with lots and lots of examples. Both the APA Style Guide Online and the Purdue OWL site are great online resources to check out as well. The link to both of those sites are in the video description below. 
I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Thanks for watching, and good luck writing.